Greetings, programs. I wanted to take a second to tell you how I created this season of Recruiter Friend using Riverside FM. Riverside is an online platform that records audio and video footage locally and uploads it to the cloud. It's been super easy for me to use. I set up a studio on the website, I send a link to my guests, and that's it. In over a decade of podcasting, finding out post-recording that the audio or video quality was bad was my biggest complaint. Not having to worry about it this season has been a huge relief. Using the affiliate link in the description below, you can check out all the other features Riverside has to offer, like their shiny new editor. Now, on with the show. Greetings, programs, and welcome to another episode of Recruiter Friend, the show where we learn about the people behind the keyboard. This week, we're sitting down with uh, a fortune teller, a seer, uh, a mystic, all kinds of words that we can use to describe this, but somebody who obviously knows that uh, this is what the game needs and that's where we're headed. The one and only Prophet from Team Valor. Hello, thank how's, you. How's it going? Thank you for having me. Yeah, great. Things are good. Um, I love your name. I was trying to think of funny ways to talk about how it is Prophet and then like working in like future telling <laughs> and stuff like that, but there's only so much you can do, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's uh, People always ask me how I got my name. It's not as uh, entertaining as people may think. It was just always spelled correctly. Um, and then there was another player in Call of Duty who had the exact same name, so I just changed the, the spelling on it, and that was it. Oh, <laughs> like, uh, so. no way. <laughs> um, why did you land on Profit? Why was that? Uh... Uh, so when I first started uh, competing, uh, I just used my last name, which a lot of us did kind of back then. There wasn't really, when I first started, there wasn't a ton of you know, gamer tags or anything like that. It was just whatever you came up with is what you came up with. And uh, we went into a tournament in call of duty one the very first one on pc and we were in the grand finals and this my teammates were like we don't know what they're gonna do like there's they we're in overtime uh and i specifically said okay this person's gonna be sitting here this person's gonna be here and got lucky and all five of the call outs that i made of where they were gonna be is exactly where they were gonna be so they started calling me that and it just kind of stuck <laughs> i like that a prophet was born i dig it that's it yeah <laughs> Um, so are you like a proper esports professional? Is that the former? Yes. Uh, back in early 2000s and then up until 2016, I played Call of Duty and Quake both professionally, uh, mostly wow. Call of Duty on PC. Uh, ProMod competed for a team called H2O and PMS. At the time, they were the largest gaming organization of its kind. Uh, they have over 40,000 members. So uh, wow. competing in just about every game you could imagine. But my my journey was all call of duty cool uh very very cool i like that yeah. a lot um that's a huge jump from call of duty to world of warcraft so why don't you walk yeah. us through how that happens yeah absolutely <laughs> it's a good one um so i competed in fps like i said call of duty uh quake when you for me at least i'm very competitive so when you play at that level there's no switch that you just turn off you're either competing or you're not so mm -hmm. for me world of warcraft was my chill game where i could just turn everything off and just play games mm -hmm. um so for I, I played on release up until uh burning crusade that was like my main game um i played a lot of warcraft 3 prior to that uh and then between seasons of comp uh, competition for call of duty and different you know games that we were competing in uh, i would just jump in and, and level and just get to max level never really progressed into the end game or anything like that it was just a place to hang out chill be able to turn that competitive switch off and just not have to be profit i could just be me so right. <laughs> that was that was kind of my journey into wow cool uh how long did you play warcraft as your like casual release game and and then like when did your esports career end or has it ended so, uh, so it hasn't ended. Um, it has ended from a competitive standpoint. I'm more of a the management side now, which I find more enjoyable. Um, just because I easier like... Easier on the fingers, too? Easier on the fingers, <laughs> easier on the wrist. Uh, I just I just enjoy uh, helping people get to that level that they want to be in. Uh, still very much competitive, just not able to put in the time that is needed to play at that level anymore. Um, but I'm, like I said, still very much a competitive person, so this kind of scratches that itch a little bit. Um, as far as World of Warcraft, that that journey, I, I still kind of play the same role. It's just my casual kind of just game to just chill and relax in. Um, but again, needing to scratch that competitive itch doing the, the management side. Right. Okay. So you're playing Warcraft. Um, 
you're taking a step back from the competition in esports and more towards the manager side. At what point did you decide to found? And you are one of the founders. Uh, Correct. Are you the are you the sole founder? Like, was it all you? Uh, no, uh, okay. absolutely not. No. <laughs> so okay, okay. Um, for years. So let's back up a little bit. So did a lot of comp- competition. Founded an esports team called uh, Team Sentinel. Uh, okay. Founded them in 2017, 2018. We were doing really, really well. We had teams competing in various uh, FPS titles around the world. We sent a team to Germany to compete in the battalion major. We were looking into Counter Strike. Uh, things were really popping off. We were doing, you know, it, we were, it was very active. Uh, and then 2020 hit and COVID hit, and it really put a wrench in things. Uh, we were we were just looking at everything and we're like, you know, financially this just isn't going to work anymore. Uh, so we decided to you kind know, of take a break. Um, but for me, the management itch was still there. I want, I needed something. Um, mm-hmm. And so we decided to form just more community side, more community basic, you know, just casual gaming type of thing. Um, and met some friends through there. Uh, that's where I met Jet. Uh, that's where I met Fell. And then Catastrophic had been with me since the early Sentinel days. And then even before that, we had done a lot of esports stuff together. And so... Uh, late 2021, we kind of bounced around a bunch of different games trying to get the community side to take off, and nothing was really sticking. Lots of survival games. We went through DayZ, you know, Fallout. There's a bunch of games we went through, uh, and just nothing really stuck. And so we had met a guy named Fell through Black Desert Online, mm-hmm. and he had a lot of MMO experience. I obviously had played a lot of casual MMOs, and we decided to venture into Elder Scrolls Online. So we did that for about six or seven months. Um, things were going really well. And fortunately, there was a kind of a game breaking bug at the time where you couldn't tank dungeons. Uh, when the tanks would block a boss, they'd instantly die. So we were like, okay, this is just frustrating at this point. You can't really progress. Um, and yeah. pro- I- I'm not going to say running a community is hard in that game. It's just the way their guild system is set up. It's not, there's not a true end game that exists, in my opinion. I'm sure there is if you really dive into it. But is that because all the tanks are dead? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, exactly. Right. So okay. <laughs> there's a there's that. You can join five guilds. It's all about trading, which is a great system, don't get me wrong. It's just okay. not the type of community that we wanted to build. And we we're kinda about to give up on the dream. We we're, we're really close. This was uh uh late 2022. And I was actually in an airport getting ready to take a flight. And I messaged Fell on Discord and I said, you know, we we should have just done World of Warcraft. Like you know, it's 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 a no brainer. It, it's got the largest community, right? Um, and he's like, messages me back like ten or fifteen minutes later as I'm boarding the plane, and he's like, well, let me talk to my cousins. Let me see how Dragonflight is. You know, see see what things are, are you know, how, how the game is, how the game's progressed. This expansion took off, landed. He messages me. He says, hey, created a guild on Thrall. Let's give it a shot. And I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> so <laughs> here we are. The rest is histories. I love it. Yeah. It turns yeah. out Dragonflight was a banger and everybody yeah, was absolutely playing. the timing on it could yeah. not have been better. So Yeah, really. I love that. That's very interesting to me that the community found the game. The game yeah. didn't birth the community. I like yeah. that a lot that you were yeah. like you're like, hey, that's we want to create this thing, but we need to find a place that needs it. Exactly. Um, and I think for us it was a challenge of trying to find a game that everybody that was already in the community wanted to play. Everybody has right. different tastes, right? So we were bouncing around in all these different games and, you know, you know, half the group likes this one, half the groups like this one. And finally, we were like, you know, if we're going to make this work, we need to just pick one and stick with it. So, yeah. And there's a bit of everything for people in Warcraft. You get PvP, exactly. Mythic Plus rating, casual stuff. There's a ton of collector stuff you can do. Yeah. Um, let's let's talk about Valor for a second. What what type of community is it? Is it a we're a hardcore esports pushing community? Is it a welcoming place for beginners? Is it a combination of both? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, it's a combination of both. Uh, okay. At first, it was designed to just be a raiding community. Um, mm-hmm. And then we had so many, you know, you look at Jet, uh, even Kat, uh, and then so many other people in the community who'd never even played an MMO before. Some of them new to WoW, some of them new to MMOs in general. Um, so we quickly noticed that there's this need for being able to teach people how to get into that type of of game um sort of like well let's let's look into that a little bit more and maybe we're kind of a helpful community and more you know teaching people how to do things so that birthed the valor academy uh which is one of our flagship programs where we cover of you know 
from anything from entry to World of Warcraft, your UI, uh, leveling all the way up into end game progression and, and multiple other avenues as well. Uh, and so we started recruiting off of that and recruiting numbers you know, jumped. We went from 60 to three or 400 people in the course of a month um, just doing that. But I have a very competitive background, as I've said, and I'm like, mm-hmm. Once I started to realize there's these tournaments, there's the race to world first. I'm like that we have we have to have be involved in this. I have to be involved somehow in this. Um, so that's when we sat down, Fel and I, and we're like, okay, let's let's put a real team together uh, and see what we can do. Mm-hmm. Um, did really well in season one, season two, and then I went to BlizzCon and uh, was humbled real quickly uh, at how lucky we have it. Um, you're meeting so many guilds and leaders that have been around since the early 2000s, 2010, and they're like celebrating, you know, hitting 500 members or getting AOTC for the first time. And I'm like, okay, we, we have something here. You know, we're, we're doing really well. However, this isn't going to be as easy as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so um, <laughs> that's kind of our foundation is built on a place for everybody. So to answer your question, it's going, it's for a competitive organization um, at our, at our soul, but we also want that social community uh, as well. I love that. The Valor Academy is my second favorite thing about <laughs> Team Valor. Um, we'll talk about my favorite in a bit. I'm going to hold on to it. It's, okay. a, it's, a, it's a little nugget, but it is the Valor Academy is my second favorite. I think uh, I'm in a couple different communities online because I am a massive believer that um, the game is meant to be played. Uh, it's meant to be available for everybody. And exactly. whether somebody wants to learn how to pet battle or they want to learn how to mythic raid. We need to share that information. I'm yep. I'm very against knowledge dragons who hoard their knowledge like a little pile of hundred percent. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the Valor Academy. I love it. I love that about uh, Valor. I noticed. So I was in a town hall yesterday. Your 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 organization. I'm gonna gush for a second. <laughs> okay. Your organization and your structure gives me all of the best brain chemicals, like all the good brain juices. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a challenge, right? Because you don't want to be so business like that nobody wants to have fun or it's just not mm-hmm. fun but uh the structure is a big huge part of our success um yeah being able to say you know we have all these different avenues that you can go um and here's how you do it right so right do you have or does anybody on the leadership team have like formal training in business management because it, it looks very much like somebody does Yes and no. Um, you know, it's mostly a combination of our IR real life jobs um, kind of okay. shining through. And you know, we have people that are kind of management in real life and it just kind of shines through. Cool. It's great. Um, I love it. It's <laughs> fantastic. And <laughs> I, I agree. It's probably a huge part of the reason why you're as successful as quickly as you have been. Yeah. Um, I think another part of that is probably the, the, the team structure. Having that structure. So I noticed yesterday in the town hall that you had yesterday as of the day of recording obviously yeah. not when this is airing but um you have like is it eight mythic plus teams yeah that grew quickly as well <laughs> um <laughs> you know, the original plan was to just have rating teams mm-hmm. and then we had people express interest in wanting to do these push groups again my entire wow history is so casual that i didn't even know any of this existed uh, up until right. about a year ago so i was like hey if if i can have teams that i can manage for competitively that that feeds everything that i want we let's make this happen um and yeah. then we just we started with one or two and then you know we have people coming out and like hey we have a group of five we'd really like to compete um and then so we had three or four and then we're like okay let's let's enter the mdi and get our get our feet wet and then just it blew up everybody's like oh we want to compete you know so uh, it just right. worked out and they did your two teams you had two teams enter the mdi yeah. in this latest mdi and they did exceptionally well didn't they Yes, uh, our Valor Emerald team uh, finished uh, 85th out of over 1,800 teams. Um, it was their their first time doing anything competitive, and it was our first time as well, uh, as far as WoW goes. So just kind of getting our feet wet. And then our Valor Rainbow, Rainbow Unicorns team, uh, I believe, finished within the top 250 as well, which, again, is you know, it's a huge... Like, yeah. Yeah, it's just huge to think, to think about that many teams entering in our, in our first year. For our first season yeah. uh, finishing that high so two of them you assume we'll see you guys on the main stage you'll be playing that's, in uh cup a that's the goal <laughs> that's the goal uh are do the teams are the teams formed from members that are already in valor or are people coming to you with the team saying hey we have a team we want to be under the valor banner 
Yeah, absolutely. So it started out as, you know, hey, we noticed you have five people. You guys are running every single night. Are you interested in this? Um, so building those internally. Um, but mm -hmm. now we're starting to get out and we're starting to get people that are saying, hey, you know, we have a team or, hey, we want to join one of your one of your teams. I have a friend, you know, that's now on one of your teams. How do I get involved? Um, so that Very cool. word of mouth is definitely spreading, which is really good for us. Um, it's just the structure portion of it, just making sure we're not getting too far ahead of ourselves. <laughs> right, right. I guess, yeah, that, I think that's, and again, that structure is going to be a, such a strength for you, which is my, the structure is my third favorite thing of yeah. <laughs> Team Valor. Um, we'll talk about number one soon, I promise. Thank you. Uh, the, the jerseys, did, we're like, where did that, was it like, hey, let's get, let's get these first day, I want to have them, or was it like a BlizzCon thing? No, uh, so... Kat and I have experience running esports teams and obviously being a player myself, I know how important representing your brand and your team and just having that logo on a shirt while you're competing is to the players and, you know, the sponsors, the leadership teams, everything. So I want I knew we wanted to have that like right away. Uh, originally, we just wanted to have it before BlizzCon. Um, but the first seven months, we had so many people asking us for merch. We're like, OK, we need to make this happen. Um, and my biggest thing is always jerseys first. Uh, I think right. being able to represent your partners, your brand um, is just really important, um, especially when you have teams putting in so much work and competing. Having their name on the back of a shirt means a lot. Um, it means a lot to us, you know, as them representing us and just gives them something to to fight for. Cool. I dig it. And they're great. Whoever your designer is, <laughs> uh, hats off to them. And we'll talk about my favorite thing now before we get into some of the, uh, the nitty gritty. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing is the art. I don't know <laughs> who designs the Valor, like, hero knight. I'm not sure what you call the Valor. The, the Valor like, guy. The Valor guy. Yeah. yeah that, who, whoever that artist is, uh, I want to sign up for their Patreon right now. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about that off camera for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, and it's everywhere. It's like it's it's all your emotes on your Discord. Yeah, it's all over your website, which is amazing. Again, you have a, a, a lovely website. Was that how long in did you say? Hey, we need to have this. this the the this Discord up and running. Oh, the website. Yeah, no, the website. Yeah. So we we went through a couple iterations. Um, for me, representation is everything. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you can fake it till you make it, or look professional, uh, it goes a right. long way. And so. You can ask everybody on leadership for the first three or four months. I was a stickler about everything. Um, and I don't, as much as I love my leadership team, uh, I know I get under their skin with how perfect everything has to be. Um, and then it started to, it started to show itself when we have people reaching out and saying, Hey, I, I want to join your guild. I saw your website and I saw how much time you're putting into uh, our guilds of wow page is our biggest um, reason why we're so successful. We get so much traffic coming from from that alone uh, and all the feedback we're getting is, you know, I looked at 100 guilds and you're the only one that had it properly filled out or you had the most information on it. Um, so that website we knew was going to be important right away to, di to display everything that we wanted. Um, it's easy to say you're, a, you know, you're a guild that represents all these different avenues. You can just come and play and do whatever you want, but to be able to show it and prove it somewhere where they can see it goes a long way. Yeah, for sure. The the Guilds of WoW, because you're partnered up with them and yeah. uh, Stack Up, I believe. Correct. Did you reach out to them or did they reach out to you? Uh, Guilds of WoW, that's funny. I saw the page when I was, when, when we were really just started getting started with uh, World of Warcraft, I was looking for resources, tools, anything to, you know, what's the secret to any other guild success? And Guilds mm -hmm. of WoW kept popping up. So I saw the website and I bookmarked it and I forgot about it for like two months. And just one day I clicked on it and I think we had like 60 members at this time. It was our first two or three months as a guild. Uh, and so I'm like, oh, let me let me set this up and let's see. And the more I set it up, I think I sent a million screenshots to leadership, uh, everybody in Valor leadership saying, oh, my God, look out. Look, look at all the tools and things that this thing has. It's amazing. Spreadsheets. It's great. I, I loved it. I fell in love with it right away. Um, so I reached out to them and I said, hey, I love your product. I want to do everything I can to promote and support this. Uh, if you're a World of Warcraft guild and you are not using Guilds of WoW, you're wrong. You were just wrong. It is free. <laughs> you have taken an hour to set it up. It goes so, so far. Uh, we get right. over 100 applications a month uh, just through Guilds oh, of WoW. Whether wow. um, it's rating, social, everything. The 
our, it's like I said, it's our biggest success. Um, and over over eighty percent of our traffic to our website comes directly from them. Uh, if, again, if you're not using it, you're you're wrong. <laughs> so, um, and then stack up. Uh, it's an interesting story. So, many 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 years ago, uh, I wanted to put together an organization that worked with military veterans. Uh, it was. Okay. You're going to laugh at the name because uh, it's kind of cringe, but we wanted to call ourselves Noob Team Six. Uh, and oh, the goal boy. was <laughs> the goal was <laughs> to just work with military veterans, things like that. And so I was doing research and trying to find any other organization that was like it. And I mm -hmm. couldn't really find anything. Um, but over the course of a few months of looking, I found Stack Up. This is the funny part that comes in. So I found it one day. And I bookmarked it, and I was doing some research. The next day, I think I was working at Best Buy at the time. It was years ago. And this guy walks in that exact next day wearing a stack-up shirt. And I was like, what are the odds of that? And so I walked up to him, and I said, hey, do you, do you know stack-up? And he's like, uh, I own it. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And so we had this whole conversation. Come to find out he lived like four doors down from me. Um, what? Yeah, it was, it was a crazy crazy story how that happened so we became good friends i talked to him a lot and uh i'm excited to keep working with them you know and valor now that we're really getting established so that's yeah. wild that yeah, is crazy the most serendipitous thing yeah. i've ever heard <laughs> the of odds of it happening like I, and i probably he's i'm sure he'd been in there before um because they work so closely with gaming and technology things like that i uh, probably just yeah. didn't register because you know i hadn't hadn't seen it but seeing it online and then literally the next day he walks in is just crazy that's wild. Um, uh, so what does Valor stand for? Does Valor have a mission statement? Is there an ethos? Yeah. What is the embodiment of Valor? Yeah, so absolutely. So in the beginning, we had so many people that uh, were in Valor, but not related and had nothing to do with World of Warcraft. So mm -hmm. we realized early on that the game's 20 years old, right? Blizzard can only do so much to show new players while still allowing them to have freedom, um, but they can't just start removing things and changing things because, you know, again, it's 20 years of content. Um, and I don't fault them for not being able to explain that to you know, new players because, again, 20 years of content, right? right? So uh, our mission statement from the beginning is be a place where anybody can come in, no matter what their skill level is, whatever their interests are, whether it's Mythic Plus, Raiding, PvP, Gold Farming, whatever it may be. Uh, that's our mission. We want to be able to support you. And, you know, any guild can say, oh, well, yeah, come in and do transmog runs. You know, we have 10 people that do that. We have a whole system for it. We have a whole competition around it every single month. Uh, mm -hmm. Same thing with raiding. You know, you want to be on a raid team? We got you. You want to progress to the highest difficulty? We got it. If you just want to get your feet wet and learn, we have an entire academy program around that. And the same with just every avenue. So the mission statement alone is... No matter what you want to do, we, we can do it. We got you covered. We have a leadership team designed around that specific thing. So That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. It's a lot and of work. It's, but... did, did you know when you came to the game with the, when you guys arrived with the intent of this is where we're going to plant our flag, did you realize that there was such a need for that type of community? No, <laughs> not even a little bit. Um, <laughs> You're like, oh, maybe people yeah. will like this. <laughs> yeah, not even a little bit. So yeah. I have a habit of saying, all right, here's 100 things we can do. Let's do all 100. Um, and this is something right. that the other Valor leaders do really well is calm me down a little bit and say, well, let's, let's maybe focus on this first. Um, right. And so once we started doing one thing and then you know people come in and they're like, hey, we really love how your structure is for this. Have you thought about doing this thing? And then we're like, okay, well, let's build something around that. And then it's just kind of evolved over time where now we have, you know, 18 leaders um, that all represent a different avenue of what Valor is, uh, allowing us to really say that we support everything. Cool. Well, I want to talk with the leaders for a second. Uh, do you have a criteria? Is there a checklist that you have? Like, you got to hit these? Where, uh, basically, where do you find them? <laughs> yeah, so we've been fortunate that they've come to us. Um, selling our vision uh, at this point is a little bit easier than it was in the beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm very meticulous on how I want things to look and be presented and, and things like that. So we've been very fortunate that the 
leaders now are buying into that vision. They understand um, as far as criteria, the interview, you know, we kind of sit down and it, it shows itself, right? If you've been there for two or three months, um, we can tell right away if, if leadership is something you should be involved with. We'll post positions, uh, we'll get a lot of interest, and we just kind of interview off of that and just, you know, is it a good fit? Cool. I like that. Um, in high-end Warcraft, uh, specifically PvP, yep. PvE, um, there's a lot of, eh, I don't like to use the word, but the word's toxicity. Yep. There is a, yep. a lot of, especially in like uh, a specific range of guilds. Yep. Um, how do you combat that? How do you prevent that from happening uh, to Valor? Yeah, uh, I knew where you were going with that as soon as you started to say it. Um, it's true. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so true, and it's yeah. not just a World of Warcraft thing. It's definitely no. in any competitive game. Um, you know, don't put me in an FPS and uh, record it, because uh, I'll probably be canceled right. for sure. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> that would never happen. You would be, <laughs> be nothing I'm but a saint. polite. I'm a saint. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, how do you prevent it from happening in Valor? Yeah, it's tough because it's hard to categorize because you have people coming in that are a certain skill level and that just naturally comes with it. Like you're, it, it's, you're passionate, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, for us, it's a, having a very good leadership that uh, leadership team that understands the overall vision and what we want to represent and making sure that they are upholding those standards, standards, holding ourselves accountable, and then those other players see it, uh, and it kind of trickles down. Everybody has bad eggs, right? We've we've had our share of uh, a couple people coming in that have had to say, hey, you know, this probably isn't the place for you. Um, but on that other hand, you know, people come in, things happen, you know, you pull them into a conversation, you say, hey, look, you know, this isn't this isn't what we want. We know you want to be part of, you know, our community. Uh, because for us, it's it's not about yourself. It's not about any one player. It's about representing something that's bigger than yourself. Uh, and so a lot of people buy right into that vision, and we haven't really had any issues. Uh, usually we can tell right away if you're not going to be a good fit or if it's just not going to work out. <laughs> but yeah. um, as far as combating, if I had to give any advice to anybody that wants to do it, um, start with a really good leadership team. Uh, if you have one toxic officer or one toxic leader it's going to spread um you have to start there yep preach he's preaching to the choir there folks <laughs> that is everybody write that down <laughs> yeah it really does i i'm, I'm very fortunate we have the you know any guild leader is going to say this but i really do believe we have the best leadership team in the in the game uh, everybody works tirelessly but they all understand that we're trying to build something that's bigger than the rest of us so. very cool um yeah very cool Good answer. I like that. You're hitting all the right notes. Uh, what are the what are the biggest challenges and the flip side, the biggest successes that you've had as a, as as a team? Yeah. So the biggest challenge is definitely uh, progression, right? Uh, I think any guild is going to say that. Um, as I said earlier, I was humbled when I went to BlizzCon, seeing how difficult <laughs> this actually is. Coming from somebody yeah. who has a lot of competitive experience and playing at a high level. WoW is a whole nother level. Um, yeah. You know, hats off to the race to world first, you know, people. That is that is a lot. Uh, and yeah. I think the word you're looking for is insane. It's insane. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. It really is. Because um, I'm like, oh, we can, yeah. you know, we'll just put together a team. It's going to be simple. Yeah. You, you push some buttons, I'll right? I'll just find yeah. <laughs> 20 people who yeah. want to have 11 mirror alts. Yeah, and exactly. can grind seeds for... <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, it's insane. So I didn't realize just how how lucky we are getting AOTC, uh, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and then moving into Mythic rating, I rated the first uh, season two of Dragonflight and Mythic. And when we got to okay. experiments, I was like, okay, this this is, uh, we're here now. And this is not going to be as easy as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so right. uh, the time that they are putting in is crazy. I would say that's our biggest challenge. Um, one I look to overcome uh, very quickly. Uh, I think we have a good vision of what we want to accomplish with that. Uh, it's just, Mm -hmm. building that team is certainly going to be a challenge uh you know my officers give me a hard time because i constantly say you know out of a game that has millions of people you it's it's a challenge to find 20 that are on a level that you can get through a boss i <laughs> think it really is yeah uh and then biggest yeah, it, go ahead sorry no i was gonna say it is that's 
the roster boss for a lot of guilds is yeah. especially especially a guild that hasn't like I, I don't want to say unproven yep. because obviously the 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 team at the core of Valor is is very proven in, in the esports space, but it's like a lot of players who are looking for CE guilds yep. are like, oh, have you gotten there before? Exactly, oh, you haven't. Yeah. What does yeah. your log say? Limits. That's really what it comes yeah. down to. Um, exactly. Yeah. So for me, uh, our Valor Blue is our progression uh, CE focus raid team, um, and our raid leader Mew. I have been with Mew. He competed in Call of Duty with me. He's the most competitive mm-hmm. person that I know. Um, he's also somebody who doesn't beat around the bush. Uh, it is team first. He understands mm-hmm. the vision and the goal. So bringing him in uh, on season three, this is the first time you know, he's raid leading with us. Uh, he's been raiding forever, right? So he understands, mm-hmm. you know, from a WoW stuff, WoW standpoint, what I don't know. Um, but I know he has the competitive background and understanding of where we want to be. Uh, so I think we're in a really good spot right now. It's just a matter of getting the right people in the right positions. Uh, and then cool. you asked uh, our biggest success. I, I think it's the community itself. Um, we joke about this, you know, every couple of weeks in leadership when we log in and we look at, you know, 970 members, uh, and, you know, there's 60, 70 people online. You guys remember like May of last year when we had 40 people and there was like three of us online, like, yeah, unless it was a raid night. Um, yeah. yeah, our biggest success is just the community coming in. Uh, those town halls are the one thing I look forward to the most because I get to share what we've been working on and I get to hear the feedback from the, you know, the community itself. What, uh, what are you going to do when you hit a uh, member cap in the guild? So we've already got a plan for that. Um, we have decided on an alternate guild for just kind of alt characters, things like that. Um, but going into the war within, we're trying to come up with what that's going to look like because with the cross realm guilds, right. Um, we're going to be able to bring in so many more people. Uh, so I definitely, you know, think we can double in size by the end of, uh, you know, this year. Uh, are we ready for that is the question. Uh, are we ready <laughs> for a night that we could log in and there could be 300 people online? Uh, Cause that's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot going on. You'll have to, yeah. your guild chat will look like trade exactly. Chat. It's gonna be... <laughs> yeah, It's just going to be constant. So we're, we're, we're planning for that. We're not sure exactly what that's going to look like yet, but uh, cool. my one complaint, if I, if I could have five minutes alone with uh, World of Warcraft developers is more guild systems. I understand the need to prevent mega guilds. Um, I, I get it, but I think you're missing something. Uh, I think the community is yeah. what builds the game. And when you have a community of, you could have 10,000 communities of five people. Those aren't communities. Those are just your friends hanging out and the need for those larger social interactions. Um mm-hmm. I could give you a million examples on why it's important because I've we've proven it over yeah. the last year. <laughs> yeah, and I don't think I don't think they're actually preventing mega guilds because like zeros to heroes exist. They yeah. have like a hundred rate. Yeah, exactly. Well, there you, you know? go. So, so yeah, they they find ways around. Yeah. So. you just look at games like, like uh, you know Neverwinter, Star Wars, some of these other MMOs that have these insane guild leveling systems. I just think it would be so cool. I have. I could put together, we could do a whole podcast on an idea I have for what a guild fortress would look like, but I don't want to take up the next three hours of talking. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll grab a Blizzard dev, we'll get you in yeah, the next go. one. <laughs> I, I, I know I have everything that you need. I have it written down, I promise. Trust me. <laughs> That's great, I love it. <laughs> um, what does the future hold for Team Valor? Yeah, so goal, getting CE. Uh, and then once mm-hmm. we get see our vision kind of looks of, you know, getting teams in the MDI, getting teams in the uh, Arena World Cup, um, any kind of tournament, just growing our competitive space. Uh, once we have all of that secured, the goal kind of looks like getting, pushing for Realm first, World world first, things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, like I said, I've been humbled. I understand how difficult that's going to be, uh, but it's still a goal. That is the long-term goal. Um Content is going to be a big one coming forward. Uh, we can't grow as a business without creating content to generate those eyeballs. Uh, we understand that. Um, so that's our goal this year. Uh, more meetups, things like that. Uh, that that's our, that's cool. our main goal. Just spreading our message, growing uh, content, and uh, being number one. 
Nice. I love it. You're going to have some fierce competition yes. on Thrall. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, uh, we noticed that too. Uh, we we're like, well, of all realms to pick, we, uh, we definitely picked one yeah. with some competition on it, which is good. Yeah, no, that is it. Uh, excellence breeds excellence. Exactly. I, I definitely believe yep. that. Hey, sorry to interrupt, but I have to tell you about this season's sponsor. Ever Ember Creative is a studio and agency dedicated to making life easier for streamers. They've helped me shape recruit a friend through brand design, video editing, and social media management. But they do so much more than that. Literally anything you need. If you're looking for a team capable of diving deep to help you achieve your goals, however big or small, call them. Also, they're fairly tolerable human beings. Ever Ember Creative. Content ignited. Um, Prophet, we end every episode with a questionnaire. And if you are ready, sir, yeah. I would like to ask you those. Absolutely. Now. All right, question number one, what is your favorite word? My favorite word, competitiveness. Um, mm -hmm. If you're a competitor, it shows your passion for something. And I think just the overall word, world, or sorry, word of competitiveness goes a long way. I'm not surprised that that was what you showed. <laughs> <laughs> question number two, what is your least favorite word? Least favorite word, defeat. Mm. Also not a surprise, no. sir. Here, put that word in front of me and... See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Question number three. What sound or noise do you love? Sound or noise do I love? Uh, so anybody in Valor is going to tell you it's a, it's a duck quacking. And there's a long story behind that. But to keep it short, uh, because of my uh, quake background, uh, when we played BDO, there was a duck pet that had a crown on it. So everybody started calling me the quack champ instead of the quake champ. Um, so now I just have a duck every time I enter and exit Discord, just quack. So. <laughs> That's great. That is a great, <laughs> that is a great favorite sound. What or what sound or noise do you hate? The, <laughs> the the Discord or Teamspeak or anything like that, like push to talk little alert mm. that people have sometimes. Oh, it drives me nuts, especially if we're raiding. I'm like, yeah. stop, whoever that is, just stop, make it stop. <laughs> Please don't do that anymore. Uh, question at number five. What is your favorite dungeon? My favorite dungeon has to be uh, Halls of Reflection. Um, mm. I've, oh, yeah. Yeah, a huge World of War, or, uh, sorry, a huge Warcraft 3, uh, the Frozen Throne, and just being chased by Arthas is like a whole nother level of nerd, <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Dude, I, I mean, they could never make that a Mythic Plus dungeon no. because it just doesn't make no. sense. But that is one of the most terrifying and enjoyable experiences yeah. I've ever had yeah, exactly. in any game. I remember doing it for the first time and just not knowing what to expect. And then all of a sudden, here comes the Lich King chasing you. And you're just like, it's just like, run. And you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just says run. Yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah. It was great. I loved it. Yeah. Uh, question number six. What is your least favorite dungeon? Least favorite, um, Nilfaris. Uh, I have died so many times to the elephant boss, whatever it is. I was so over it. Yep. <laughs> I hate it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're alone, especially after they changed the way the chains yeah. work. No, it's just yeah. super frustrating. Question... Oh, yeah, big time, big time. Uh, question number seven. What is your favorite curse word? Favorite curse word. That's a tough one. I have to go with the F word. Uh, okay. I don't, you can say fuck. It. You don't I, yeah, I don't think okay. anything expresses uh, how I feel more than when I'm saying that. <laughs> Rather, regardless of the a, uh, whatever it may be about. Exactly. Yeah, it's very it's a very emphatic word, whether that be good connotations or bad, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Question number eight. What is your favorite raid? ICC. Same reason, mm -hmm. uh, Arthas, you mm -hmm. know, the whole story I grew up on, the Frozen Throne, so just that entire yeah. lore is just my favorite. Yeah, I'm with you. Far too much of my personality is tied yeah, to that exactly. game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question number nine, what is your least favorite raid? Least favorite. That's a good one. Um, Uh, I'm going to go with Aberus, actually. Um, I think just because mm. I think it was really, it was a great raid. Don't get me wrong. I just, uh, Experiments has a bad taste in my mouth after doing Mythic. Uh, we, yeah. So I also hate Experiments. Yeah, that's a rough um, one. 
Yeah, but I would go f- one step further and say there has never been a good council boss yeah, fight. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> in the it's history rough. of yeah. council yeah. boss fights. I think they're designed to be, I think they're just toxic, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and experiments was even worse. We're going to rant on this for a second. It's even worse because it's just pure chaos the whole time. One thing. It's like, I like patterns and structure. Exactly. So I'm a huge football fan uh, and with a competitive FPS background, it's it's a dance, right? It's all Mm -hmm. tactical. It's methodic. That fight is just Mm -hmm. everything everywhere and just good luck. Hope for the best. If one person messes up, I mean, I understand the competitive part of it. Like, it's supposed to be that way. Everybody has to play perfect, but... It's hard to predict anything when it's just all just in your face everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, instead of, and I mean, I guess you can, you can like, you know, okay, the deep breaths are coming yeah. up now. We're going to master spell here at this point. You know, you can plan that out. The deep breaths are happening at this point, but it still just feels like, yeah, here's chaos. this ball. Good luck. Like, See where it goes. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, you, you got that one figured big, out. Here's the, another one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. And the mechanics of the ball, the physics of it were never like, they weren't exact. Yeah. I've I've seen people walk into it and have it bounce past yep. them like yeah it was super frustrating. Wait, what's going on? Here? <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. Question. <laughs> Sorry. I hate that fight. Yeah. Question number ten. If Azeroth was real, where would you call home? Where would I call it? Westfall? Um, mm, Westfall. Yeah. Uh, a lot of that's a first. So when I first started playing World of Warcraft, when it first came out, I had never played an MMO before. Um, I was Call of Duty FPS games. The only non FPS game that I played was Warcraft Three. Uh, and when I first mm-hmm. started playing uh, World of Warcraft, I got lost in just exploring. I think it was like level three when I walked okay. into Westfall and just immediately died. Right. Um, but <laughs> I remember seeing somebody go over to a body in Westfall and just like go down and crouch down next to it. And I was like, what are they doing? Mm-hmm. Um, but I knew how to slash whisper because I played Warcraft three and you can do that in the multiplayer. And so I remember messaging them like, what are you, what are you doing after you kill something? And they're like, what? And I'm like, you're, you're doing something like after you kill it. So they go and they kill another one and they go down and they crouch down. And I'm like, what are you doing? And they're like looting it. I was like, you can loot it? I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> so uh, Westfall has a, a lot of memories for me because that's when I first started making friends in the world of Warcraft and showing uh, how noob I actually was at uh, that type of stuff. I love yeah. that. That is a great reason <laughs> to choose Westfall. Yeah. <laughs> I also grew up on a farm that's and great. it's kind of a farmland. So it was like the most like home. So yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, that's great. <laughs> that's what a wholesome answer for a place to, <laughs> to choose that yeah. is. It's a good place. <laughs> Very cool. Old Blanche. Uh, Profit that. Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> and if you're a rogue, you've got the dead mines, yeah, you've got the exactly. Defias quest line, all of it's yeah. just, yeah, so good. Yeah. A lot of love for us, Fall. Uh, sir, that is, that is the show. I want to thank you so much for no, being absolutely. here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. This was great. Can you tell the listeners where they can find you and how they can apply to join Valor? Yeah, absolutely. We, all of our links, everything you can find is right on our website, vlrgaming.com. Uh, you can find all our social media, how to apply, our raid teams, and pretty much any information that you would need. Uh, that'll get you into the Discord, and our you know mod team and community team will uh, answer any questions you have or just have a look around. Uh, it can be a bit intimidating at first. Uh, it's, there's a lot of information there, but I promise that uh, it's it's easy once you start to navigate around. Oh, we didn't even talk about the Discord. Who said? Was it you who set up? Yeah, that's my baby. I have. Uh, spent way too much time on that discord uh, i have now as of recently released some control to our community manager mama and fluffy who uh have taken over and fortunately for me and uh they do a fantastic job they understand what i'm looking for uh, like i said i had the, be- right. the best leader- leadership team so that's awesome but uh it starts at the top sir <laughs> friends <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter at RIF underscore podcast. You can subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're, in, if you're inclined, drop us a review. They do help the show get discovered. Remember, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. We'll see you next week. <laughs>